why. Um, this tutorial is about the AST importer, of course. And uh, this is about um, merging distinct uh, individual ASTs together so they would form, form one big and cohesive AST. Um, I'm Gabor Martin, I work at Ericsson in Budapest, Hungary. So after a short introduction, we're going to have a live demo where we're going to build a simple uh, merge tool which utilizes the, the AST importer library. And at the second uh, half of the presentation, we are going to go through the internal details of this uh, library. So simply put, the AST importer is a class. This is part of the Clang AST. Um, we can just specify if we want to import one declaration or type from one AST context into another context. So to visualize that, uh, at the left-hand side of the slide, we can see the destination context, which is often referred to as the to context. Um, at the right-hand side of the slide, we see the source AST context, which is often referred to as the from context. There we have a definition for my class, and we, when we say that we want to import this definition into the uh, destination context, into the to context, we simply grab those AST nodes and we copy them into that context. So this is a piece of cake. Um, current users of the AST importer library are the cross-translation unit, uh, static analysis um, in Clang. Um, actually, normal static analysis is confined into um, one translation unit. When we want to extend its behavior towards multiple translation units, then um, when we find a function whose definition is in another translation unit, then we can import the definition uh, into the current AST uh, context via the help of the AST importer library. LLDB's expression pars parser is another user of the AST importer library. Um, when we um, evaluate an expression in LLDB, then all the unknown types and declarations are being imported from the AST, which is built from, from the debug information. If you uh, have seen um, Rafael's presentation yesterday about um, NLDB, then actually you may know that this is just a gross simplification about that process. Um, uh, actually, there are potential future users of this library, I believe. So every tool could use the AST importer, which eats an AST which is uh, produced by the Clang, Parser, and Samo. So as we did a natural extension of the Clang static analyzer uh, to, to use multiple translation units, I think that would be possible to do that with Clang Tidy. So let's dive in. Um, let's try to build a simple tool that utilizes this library. Um, but before that, let me explain a bit further the structure of the AST. So actually these arrows that you see represents containment. So translation unit declaration contains the forward declaration of my class and the, and the definition of my class in this case. But this, this relation between the translation unit declaration and the contained nodes is, is a bidirectional relation. So we want to represent that the parent of, of, of the my class definition node is the translation in declaration. So if we represent that information for every node, then the AST is getting a little bit more complicated. Now there are other information we want to um, represent in the AST. For example, um, the forward declaration of my class and the definition of my class actually represents the very same uh, entity. So they form naturally a, a redeclaration chain. Um, actually, we redeclare, we, we redeclare the, uh, the first declaration by the second declaration. So this is why they form, form a redeclaration chain. And this relation is handled via this previous declaration um, uh, connection. Now, if we do that to every node in the AST, then we are getting 
a bit more complicated uh, network. So there's also another thing, um, type information. We want to, uh, we, we store type information in the, in the AST as well. And almost every declaration has a type node attached to it. So uh, finally, we are getting a huge um, network with, with, with a lot of interconnections between the nodes. Now, um, the question is, could we just simply um, connect these, these, these ASTs together by simply setting pointers from one AST context to another AST context like this? So, let's see. So, I've prepared some files for you guys. Um, I'm, I've modified the, the, the source code of Clang. Actually, I've modified the ST damper utility so we will not see implicit nodes and some clutter, which is not uh, important for the sake of this demo. Then I've created um, some modifications in, in the CMake files. So we will have an executable file. Uh, that's actually the, uh, the, the demo. And um, this depends on, on, on several uh, Clang libraries and on LLVM support library. So let me show you the source code. So we include a bunch of headers. We include a header for the AST importer. Then we include headers for the AST matchers. AST matchers are tools to select certain nodes from the AST. It's a kind of declarative way to, to, to form um, certain properties about those nodes. Um, you will see them in action in a, in a minute. So we have a bunch of uh, usings for the sake of convenience. Then we have this uh, function template, get first decal. This gets a matcher as a parameter and an AST unit as the second parameter. So uh, the matcher selects, a matcher could select several nodes from an AST. And we just want to uh, get the, the, the first node. Okay, so in main, we, we are going to build a simple, uh, uh, so we are going to build an AST from string literals. So we have the forward declaration of my class here, and then we are uh, going to build an AST unit um, from that uh, uh, string literal. And this is done by the help of the tooling library. Actually, this is really useful if, if you want to um, uh, experiment with the Clang AST and, and uh, you can just write tests easily in this case, in this way. Um, uh, here we have the, the source code for the for the source translation unit. And there we have the definition of my class. And now we would like to, to import the definition of my class into uh, this context, to the, to the destination context, where we have only a forward declaration of my class. So for that, let's just create a matcher, uh, an AST matcher. This is a CXX record decal, which has a name. Then it is not enough to have a matcher. We have to uh, get the actual address of the node, and we will utilize this get first decal function template I, I've, I've mentioned. So there we go. We have the node. Now let's try to um, dump the AST of the, the the source AST context, so we can get the translation unit declaration of that context, um, and then we will are going to dump that. So that's what we see is that we have a translation unit declaration with the definition for the, for the class and an access specifier declaration public. We have the field, we have the uh, initializer as well. So this is the source AST context. Now, uh, excuse me. So let's just do the same with the, with the uh, destination AST context, with the two context. I'm getting the translation unit declaration from the ST context in this case. All right. 
right? So just a few seconds. So besides this warning, we see that we, we have the transition and declaration. And uh, under that, we see the forward declaration from my class. Now, our goal is to somehow connect, interconnect these two ASTs. So we would like that the forward declaration and the definition upper appears under the same translation and declaration. So um, let's just try to set the pointers. So um, So we set the declaration context for uh, the definition of my class. That's going to be the translation and declaration in the uh, destination context. And this is actually the first arrow here. We want to implement the second arrow, which is the other direction of this uh, um, uh, relation. That's it. Um, now, the third arrow is that we would like to create the redeclaration chain. So actually, that means um, the previous declaration must be set here. All right, but we need to have another matcher for the for the uh, for our declaration. So let's see if this is working. Very good, this worked. So actually we can see that the translation and declaration exactly contains the, the forward declaration of my class, then there's the definition and they do form a, a redeclaration chain the via the previous link. So then the question is, um, why do we know it need the AST importer at all? Because we can just simply connect ASTs together, right? So the first problem here is that we are using setter functions on the source AST and that means we are um, mutating this AST in a way that we are making it a malformed, uh, in, a, in a malformed uh, condition. So this means we cannot use this source AST anymore uh, in a standalone way. So we just ruined it. Um, in, in some cases, for some applications, this, this is not uh, acceptable. This is one reason. The other reason, uh, Right. Another reason that uh, this approach is not the best is because when we introduce a scope here, so if we introduce a scope here, and by the time when we uh, dump the AST, then we reach a node which has been freed. So in this case, this results in a segmentation fault. Um, so this is the reason, one reason why we would be better copying the nodes into the destination context. All right. So the third problem is that the Clang AST itself uh, decides equivalency of nodes based on their pointers. For example, um, in case of time pointers, and in case of this special uh, or, or this this this. Um, for the declaration of my class, the type pointer will uh, point um, to a node which is in the to context, and in case of the my class definition, it will point to a node that's in the from context. So they are naturally not equal. But if we had parsed the 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 two thing uh, um, uh, just as one step, if if they were one 
file, then they would uh, naturally point to the very same type. So um, that's, that's the third thing. Uh, also, um, I've already showed you that the ST itself is, is a really uh, huge uh, network of interconnections. Can you tell me what other things did we forget to set uh, now? Uh, actually, it's, it's, it's something that is really, really hard to follow what other pointers are, are not set. So this is not the, the proper approach, and uh, this is uh, why we really need the AST importer to do the deep copy of nodes and properly set the connections between these nodes. Um, actually, you, you may have heard that the Clang AST is designed to be immutable. And that is true that the Clang AST must not be uh, changed once, once the parser gives that to the tools. But actually, the AST importer is uh, doing something very similar uh, that the parser does. So it, it builds up the AST. So that's an exemption from the true because uh, this is how we build up the AST during the merging. All right. Um, so let's use the AST importer instead of just playing with pointers. All right, so the AST importer's constructor takes the to and from context, then it, it receives the files, file managers as well. We need the file manager in order to, to be able to handle source locations. And there's an additional parameter which is called the minimal import. This, uh, when, when this is set to true, then, uh, in, for example, in case is of classes and we import a class, we will not import the fields and methods. We will just end up with a stub, a simple stub for that uh, class. This is really useful for some cases uh, of, for LLDB, but uh, we are not going to use this in this demo. Uh, by setting this false, we are going to do a full import. That means when we import a class, we will import the fields and methods as well. So the importer has an import function, and we want to import the uh, definition of my class. And we immediately receive a warning that uh, we do not handle the return value of this function. So the return type is an expected declaration. Um, this expected type is coming from the LLVM uh, namespace. Um, Together with LLVM colon colon error, the expected and the error is the, the accepted way of handling errors in the LLVM universe. Uh, once you have an expected type, uh, and once you, once you have a value whose type is, is, is an expected, then uh, you must explicitly check whether uh, there's an error uh, there. So, an expected is something similar to, to an optional. So when, when, you have, when, you, when you have a normal function that returns with the value, but there can be errors, then you can wrap that in an expected uh, object. So if there's an error, you can get the error from the uh, expected uh, object. If you don't have an error, you can just simply write star, uh, imported the error, and then you can get the, the actual declaration. So as I said, we have to, uh, check this variable. Also, uh, we can get the underlying error object from the expected. Um, this is done by the take error function of the expected. So we, this is really useful if you want to get some more error information. Um, the error object is somewhat similar to the expected in a sense that we must explicitly state that uh, it, is, it has been checked. If we weren't doing that, then we would get a runtime assertion. So this is why we have to consume this error. Now, let's just see uh, the, the created AST. It's actually pretty similar to what we had with the naive approach, but without those problems. So there's the uh, forward declaration, there's the definition. If you take a closer look uh, about the addresses of these nodes, then you may notice that 
their uh, addresses are pretty close to each other. And this suggests that they are indeed uh, owned by the same AST context. All right, so before going on, let me just further explain uh, the algorithm of the EST importer. So when we want to import a declaration, then first we must uh, look up in the destination context for existing declarations, which has the very same name to that node we want to import. Um, then if we find something uh, that has the very same name, then we must check whether this declaration is inconsistent or consistent with the, with the newly imported node. Um, this consistency check is done by checking the structures of, of the declaration. So for example, if, you, if, if we have two uh, classes, then they are uh, structurally equivalent or consistent if they have the very same fields with same names and same types in the same order. Um, so when we find an existing uh, uh, declaration, and if it turns out to be consistent with the newly imported one, then we can just simply return with the existing declaration. Otherwise, there's some inconsistency. Um, in, in C++ semantics, we would say there's a one definition rule violation. So we would like to report this back to the user. If we didn't find anything, then that means that we must create this new node. Um, this is the only case when, when we have to create a new node in the destination context. Um, in, in order to create a new node, we must, uh, so to create that new node, we will call its constructor, but the constructor may have um, uh, mandatory parameters and, and we must first import those mandatory parameters. Otherwise, we will not be able to call the constructor. So this naturally forms uh, a graph of dependencies in between these nodes. All right, so let's just create some inconsistency here. Um, I'm going to have uh, two different uh, definitions which are inconsistent. Now we would expect to see some, uh, some diagnostics about this inconsistency, but in order to see the diagnostics, we must explicitly enable these diagnostics on the AST unit. And actually we must do this for the from context as well, because the diagnostic uh, contains nodes from, from both AST contexts. And there we go, there we have, the, uh, there we have our diagnostics that the, indeed the, the two classes are consistent. We have fields with different names. And if you take a look at the AST, then you may say, see that we are left with the first, the original uh, definition of the, uh, the class. Okay. Um, So this is what happened here. We um, imported the definition of my class. It turned out to be inconsistent, so we returned back with an error. All right, so the next thing is that these errors can propagate. What, what do I mean under that? So let's try to import the, this field instead of importing the definition of my class in the source context. So this is going to be a field. And then let's uh, import that one. Actually, we have the very same results, but um, the thing that happened here is that when we import the field, then we realize that the constructor of the field requires uh, 
the declaration context to be present or imported first. And the declaration context of the field is the class itself. This is my class. And uh, so that, therefore we, we uh, first must import the class. Then we realize that there is an error. There is an inconsistency between the two definitions. And we set an error for, for my class. And then as we traverse back through the import stack, uh, we propagate this error back to the field. This is how these errors propagate. Now, let's just uh, further complicate this uh, thing. So let me add a forward declaration of class Y. Then uh, let me create a definition of this Y uh, in, the, in the source context. There we have a, a method, F, which has a variable with, with the type my class. Now, let's try to import Y. So actually, we would expect that uh, the definition of Y is, is, is inconsistent because it contains a, a method which contains a variable which, whose type is inconsistent. So we'd expect that this error propagates back to the whole uh, definition of Y. Let's just copy this. The matcher is going to be different, of course. This is um, another CX record decker, which has a name. Very good. Then we would like to um, import Y. Um, okay. So actually, what we see that, all right, we have the original definition of my class here. Then we have the forward declaration of Y. That's perfectly fine. But actually, we see that the definition of Y is, is, is here. So it, uh, why, why is it here? It's, uh, something that seems to be wrong. So let me explain what just happened here. So when we import Y, then in order to be able to import its fields and methods, we must create a stub uh, a declaration for that class in, in the two contexts. So that's, that's what we do. Otherwise, we would not be able to call the constructors of the, of the fields and methods. So then we go on and try to import the method declaration. Then we go on and import the body of that method. Then we see uh, the type, which eventually happens to be inconsistent, so we bail out with an error. Then this error propagates back through the import stack. That's very good, so everything is set to be in an error now state. But by the time uh, when we realize that there's an error, we already created the node. Um, so what we can do is that we set an error in the two context as well for that created node. So uh, we associate an error for the created node, and the users of the AST importer may check uh, whether the imported node itself is in an error node state or not. Okay, so let me just show you how we can check this, uh, this, this, uh, these error states. So actually, um, Uh, to check these errors, we need to have um, an additional auxiliary um, uh, state. This is a, this is an AST, so this is called a, as a shared state. Why this is a shared state? We may have several AST importers which import from from independent uh, source context, but to the very same destination context. So they may share this shared state, and they could. Uh, um, 
read the salary information that is associated additionally to the, to the uh, uh, destination AST. Okay, so let's just uh, do that. We create this shared state and we pass that uh, in, the, in the constructor. So we can actually query whether this uh, error has been set or not. Um. What is 2y? 2y is the definition that we just created. So we have another matcher for that. Um, actually, get import decal error, if any, this, 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 this really nice long uh, function returns with an optional of an error. So just for the sake of this demo to um, demonstrate that uh, there has been an error set, we can formulate an assertion here to, to, to that. So I, I expect, of course, to, to see the same AST, but I don't expect to see any sessions. That's very good. Um, actually, we can uh, uh, query the, uh, so, all right. So getting back to here, um, now we query the error information in the, in the source context at the left-hand side of the slide. But we can query this error information for, for each and every node in the, in the source as the context. So we can do that by uh, querying the, the, the importer itself, which, which is associated to, the, to that from context. So we can do that like, and let's say uh, the definition of my class uh, has an error associated to it. This again returns with an, uh, with an optional error, so just to demonstrate that there's an error set to that, you can build it like this. All right, so we do not see the assertion, so that means the errors are indeed set. This can be really useful for the, for the users of this library because um, you can actually check whether a node in the AST uh, has some inconsistency um, after the merge, okay? So, um, just take a deep breath and massage your temple because I know this is uh, getting a bit long. Maybe make a few rounds with your neck. So we are diving a bit more deeper. <laughs> Um, since we are already talking about errors, I have to tell you that actually we do cache these errors. What, what does that really mean? What's the impact of caching these errors? So once we know that uh, we have an error associated to, to the definition of my class in the source context, whenever we want to import another node whose import path goes through this node, then we simply return with that error. We, we, we abort the importion. We do not try to import that again. And actually that's what the caching means. Um, we do cache the errors in the uh, destination context as well. Why is that important? That is important when we have more than one source context like this in the slide. So what happens when we want to import uh, another node whose import path goes through the definition of my class. At this point, actually, uh, the definition of my class in the from to, source, from, from to source context and in the destination context is absolutely consistent. But there's an existing inconsistency between the first uh, uh, source context and between the destination context. So what happens here is that we consult with this uh, error cache 
So we know that we already have an associated error with the, uh, with the definition of my class in the two, uh, two context. So we bail out, we return back with that error. And if you think about it, these three AST contexts are inconsistent with each other. Okay, the two contexts and from two is maybe uh, consistent, but if you look at the three of them, then there's an inconsistency. Why error handling is so important? I've been talking about error handling for quite a while now, and you may wonder why would I uh, like to uh, import one inconsistent definition uh, in, into a context where I have uh, another definition. So the thing is that these errors are more often than you may think for the first sight. Um, a real life example is uh, the Xerxes library. In this slide, you see two translation units, two different translation units. They have, uh, they define the cleanup type as different class template instantiations. Actually, this is a one definition rule violation, but this is, so this cleanup type is externally visible, visible from these translation units, but they are used only locally uh, inside that translation unit. There's no direct use from, of, of that symbol from any other translation units. So um, when you link these translation units together, the linker will not complain. Uh, everything is fine. But um, in, in the um, level of the EST import, actually we do something similar to, to the linker because we, we merge things together. But I think that's the last uh, uh, common thing. So um, the granularity and the complexity of, the, of what we do uh, by merging ASTs, uh, it's inevitable there will be some kind of subtle inconsistencies that I show you here with the cleanup type. Um, okay. The next uh, important internal detail is, is talking about all their violation or these inconsistencies. So when uh, we look up an existing uh, declaration with the very same name, then uh, if it turns out that the existing declaration is consistent with the newly imported declaration, then, then, then we just simply keep the existing uh, node. If they are inconsistent, then we report with a node their violation. But actually we can specify uh, whether we want uh, to report back an error in this case or not. So the thing is that the default behavior is that we do report back an error and we throw away the, the newly imported de declaration if, if they happen to be inconsistent. Um, that's the conservative strategy. The liberal strategy, uh, actually the clients of the ST importer can choose uh, from, from these strategies. The liberal strategy means that, all right, I don't care whether there are inconsistencies, just please create and copy that new node, and this is not going to be an error. And this can be really useful in, 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 the, in, in that example I showed you previously with Sarxes. Um, there's a whiskey there because I had a bet with a friend and a colleague that this is never going to be in Clang before 2023. And actually, the LDB guys wanted these strategies really uh, badly. So I'm going to have my whiskey soon. Um, the thing is that, getting back to this success thing, that uh, when we choose to use this liberal strategy, then we may find roughly 20% more bugs. Um, yeah. Just, there's an other really, really uh, important internal detail that, that, that is about cycles. So, the after syntax tree is actually not a tree. I don't think this is uh, something new for you, but uh, it's rather a graph. It's filled with cycles. Um, my personal favorite is, uh, is the class template declaration, where <clears throat> every uh, information that is related to being a template like the uh, type parameter, template type parameter is attached to the class template declaration. And the structural um, layout is described in, in a attached CXX record declaration. And we can simply just uh, get 
the template back from this exec cycle decor by calling the get described template function. So I'm telling you a secret. This is how actually the, the Clank parser and the summer works. There's, there's no magic there. Um, so when, when we, uh, when we want to call a constructor of a node because we want to um, create that, then we must import every mandatory uh, parameters before, before we could do that. Um, only then can we set the, the, these non-mandatory parameters on, 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 on the created node. Um, so, for example, when we import a function declaration, then first we must import its declaration context, then we will create the nodes, and only then we will import the body, and then we will set the body to that existing uh, already created node. So, this is uh, okay. this 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 import mechanism itself is a kind of a, a depth first search traversal, but the edges are driven uh, by these dependencies. So, of course, when we create a new node, then we must mark that as visited or imported, um, and we must handle these circular dependencies. For example, we have a node A whose constructor needs a node B. But then we may have this dependency uh, in the other direction as well. So Bay may require node A to be able to call its constructor. So this is a perfect cycle. This is exactly what happens with, with the class template declaration and with the CXX record decal. We must break out from this cycle in a way that we must have a setter function and we must, um, we must be able to, to set one of them after we created the node. Actually, if we, if we cannot do that, then we cannot import uh, that structure. At the bottom of the slide, you may see one language construct that's valid in C. When you define a structure uh, in the parameter list of a function. So this is a problematic structure for the impor importer because uh, its declaration context is the function itself, fo. So in order to create the structure, we must import first the function, but in order to create the function, we must import first the parameters. So it's a deadly cycle. We cannot do anything with that. In this case, we bail out and we return with an error to the user. It's not supported. This is the only one. Um, when it comes to error handling and when we talk about cycles, then uh, here's a a really example, a re really interesting example. We have um, five functions, A, B, C, D, and E. At the right hand side of the slide, you can see the dependencies between these nodes. So when we import A, then we are going to import B, then C, and D. Then as we traverse back, we will import E. And let's say, there we found some inconsistency or, or maybe an, an, an unsupported stru structure or unsupported language construct, then we realize uh, that there has been an error and that error propagates back to B, then that propagates back to A. So this is the simple case. But what happens when we have a cycle um, in these dependencies? So let's say the last node is A. Um, yeah, this, this is what happens here. Actually, this is the true face of the, of the AST when it comes to merging ASTs together. Um, so what we do is that we, we try to import A, then B, and C, and A. Then A is already visited, so we traverse back. Then we um, try to import E. We realize the error. Then this error propagates back to A. And actually, the problem is that uh, we should have set an error for C because C depends from A and A is in error now state. But we could not do that. So this is the reason why we must track uh, cycles on, 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 on every import path. So when we get back to A and, and we realize that there's an error, then we get the tracked cycles 
on previous import paths, and we will set an error for every uh, node on, on, on the stored import paths. Okay, this is the last uh, topic about the internal details. So, redeclaration chains are simply redeclarations of the very same entity. In this case, at the left hand side of the slide, you may see a prototype declaration for F and then a def definition for the same F. And previous implementations of the EST importer just attempted to um, import only the definition. So it, it, it left out the prototypes. Um, this was actually a very good idea because that resulted in uh, um, shorter uh, and more compact AST. Now, let's uh, take a look at virtual functions. In this example, if we want to import the definition, the out-of-class definition of, of, of the virtual function, then uh, there's going to be problems with, with, with this uh, approach that imports only the definition. So the virtual flag is set only for the, the canonical, the first declaration. That's the in-class uh, prototype. And this is not set for the definition. So if we import only the definition, then the isVirtual property will return uh, a false value. Actually, uh, this is because we query the first declaration and we ask from the first declaration, do you have the virtual flag set or not? And when we import the definition only, then uh, this uh, information is actually missing from the AST. So what we do instead is that we import the whole redeclaration chain of functions and we must uh, take care about the order of, of, of these redeclarations. And if we find an existing uh, prototype uh, in the destination context, then we will chain the newly imported declarations to the existing one. All right, I, I don't want to drown you with, with uh, so many internal details, so take a deep breath and Actually, don't forget the EST Importer is a really cool library. You must try it if you have a tool. Um, there will be a roundtable discussion uh, about it as well pretty soon. And uh, yes, I'd like to uh, express my gratitude to Alexei Sidori, uh, who reviewed roughly around 100 patches in the past two years, and we had a great improvement in, in, in the EST Importer in these two years. Thank you, and it's time for questions. Um, my name is Konstantin, and I have two questions. Uh, first one is, um, uh, can AST importer work on AST resulting from uh, non-instantiated templates? So AST is resulting from non-instantiated templates. Yeah, because uh, as far as I could see in uh, Clang, like there are two phases. Uh, you, we have parser, some semantic analysis, but uh, template instantiation happens later and it mm -hmm. kind of mutates. Uh, yeah, I don't see why it could not. I mean, um, if you have a class, class template declaration, for example, and, and you, uh, you don't have any implicit or explicit instantiations for that class template, then your AST is not going to contain any, any instantiations. And the AST importer actually works with, with those ASTs as well, so I, I think it's not a problem. Okay, but uh, can see, uh, suppose uh, in, the, uh, in the two uh, translation unit, yep. we have uh, this uh, uh, non-instantiated mm -hmm. AST, and in the other part we have, for example, the same but uh, instantiated, mm -hmm. and instantiated wrongly. So it won't cause any problems. I mean, errors will still be detected. Everything will work as expected. Um, the other, the, the only problem I see if you have two different class template instantiations and then they are inconsistent. Um, actually, actually, class template instantiations are a bit special. I, uh, I haven't uh, have any, haven't had any slides about it. I was considering, but the thing is that uh, it is very. We have to do additional work when we merge class template instantiations because um, there are uh, 
certain sub declarations in the in the or, or sub expressions in the uh, cluster there could be these kind of nodes that are instantiated in the in the in the custom place specialization just for example there may be uh, instantiations of default arguments of a, of, a, of, a, of a number function or instantiation of, of um, uh, init expressions which must be merged in between the two uh, AST contexts. So, um, as you, so uh, but if I understand your question, you have just one definition in one context and you do not have any definitions in the other context. You just have the class template declaration. Yeah, for example. Yeah. I think it could work. So, um, actually, the way how we uh, how we search for for class template instantiations is based on the 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 parameters of the template. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good work. Okay. Uh, Cool. And another question is, uh, you already touched on this a little bit, but uh, anyway, um, so suppose we have uh, like two translation units. Mm -hmm. uh, they both include the same header mm -hmm. uh, with some uh, function which has a body in the header. Yeah. And so due to ODR and the proper uh, attributes, we don't get any um, errors at link time. So my question is, uh, so if, if I like uh, try to uh, compile and link those is the usual way, uh, like I, I do compilation, I, for example, use a LVM link to, to link those together and get some IR. And the other scenario is I just uh, use your AST importer uh, to kind of get AST from first one, then get AST from the second one, then I do this import yeah. And then I generate IR. Will I get the same IR? Uh, well, if there's no mistake and uh, if, the, if the two AST can remain consistent, then yes, that, that should be the same. So, yeah, I, I kind of assume that both uh, translation units are uh, kind of valid C++ programs. So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, yeah, as I mentioned with, with that example in, in, in the uh, Xerxes cleanup type, type def, um, you may find that uh, you have inconsistencies in the level of the AST, even though you can link uh, those translation units. So Suppose I don't have any inconsistencies, I, like it's fully yeah. correct C++ code. Yeah, then, so. then, 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 it's, then it's a way to, to merge ASTs and gen generate code from them. That, that's working. Okay, so... Is it somewhere on GitHub or? Um, well, the AST importer is part of the the Clang AST, so it's 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 in, in, oh, okay. in GitHub okay. <laughs> now. And uh, uh, yeah. So it's part of uh, Trunk. Yeah, it's it's part it's part of Clang. Yeah. Of, of, of Trunk, I mean. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for the speaker? Is there anything else you'd like to say? Oh, no, it's fine. All right, so let's thank the speaker. Thank you. Thank you.